Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for real steel? In the film, you know, the chemistry between Hugh and Dakota is so good. What was the process like of finding the right kid? The process was pretty long because I knew that even if Hugh and I did everything right, the movie could not be great if the boy wasn't great. So I saw hundreds and hundreds of boys in pretty much every English-speaking country in the world. In a way, with a role like this, you need a good actor, but you kind of need something that isn't acting. You need an authenticity. Because if you're conscious of a kid actor giving a performance, that kid ain't never gonna be someone you root for. And he sure as hell ain't gonna break your heart. And from the original book, you changed the, it was more of a dystopian, darker. Well, you know what's so weird? I've read that on the internet, but mm -hmm. I don't know if people have actually read the story because the only thing dystopian about the Matheson source material is that the guy is willing to die by getting in the ring against a robot. That's a dark notion. I think that the Matheson story is a big idea coupled with a desperate solitary protagonist and those traits are completely alive and well in Real Steel the movie. I love that the robots in the film were there. Um, but I love that because, you know, when it's all digital... You can feel it. Yeah. You can feel it. And that's so many movies. It's so many movies. Now that everything can be done digitally, people don't take the time or the money or the craftsmanship to build the real thing. We built several of these robots for real, and I think it's why the movie has a kind of groundedness and a reality to it. Because if this movie didn't have reality and the texture of the real, it would not work as emotionally for people. Now, I know there's a sequel already in development from what I hear. Is that something that, you know, if the opportunity arose that you'd be interested in directing and oh, going yeah. forward with the There franchise? will not be any Real Steel sequels, nor Night at the Museum sequels, without me directing. Uh, I know that's a bold statement, but these are my two, my two kind of, my babies. But since it's based on a book, where, I mean, is there, are there elements from the book that are going to be in the sequel? Well, the, the, it, remember, know. the book is only a short story. Yeah. So, we have exhausted that. Mm -hmm. However, the sequel is still very much the sport that Matheson invented in his short story, the protagonist that Matheson suggested in his short story, but it really delves into the fallout from the fame and fortune that Kenton is going to have. It's about what happens to that father-son relationship, and it really explores the class warfare between the monetized WRB and the underground fight world, mm -hmm. and the kind of clash uh, well, where is the real legitimate sport taking place? Uh, so it's got some cool ideas, but first I need people to show up this October. And one last question really quick. I know you're directing Frankenstein, and this seems a like a very dark tale for you because you're known for lighter films. What is your vision for this? Well, it's interesting. You know what? When people heard I was doing Real Steel, they were like, what? Comedy guy doing Real Steel? Hopefully I pulled that off. Same thing with Frankenstein. I'm all about continued challenges, and if I can keep surprising people, that's my goal. Thank <laughs> you.